There's no version of success without suffering. The only real choice you have is what you're willing to suffer for. If you're in your 20s and you just finished the CS degree, but you can't land a job, or you're in your 30s staring at your life like, I cannot do this for another decade, this is for you. The tech job market is competitive. It is noisy. It is saturated at the entry level. And that is exactly why the people who win are not the most talented. They're the ones who can tolerate the process longer than everyone else. My name is Phil. Over the last eight years, I've transitioned from a broke 30 year old English ESL teacher to a six figure senior developer and a tech lead for multiple companies who generated seven to eight figures in revenue. I've built five different startups and most recently I've mentored people trying to break into tech and helped over 40 people land tech jobs this year alone. And I've watched the same lesson repeat over and over. The winners are not special. They're just willing to suffer for a goal that is actually worth it. And the goal that is worth it in tech is not learning coding. It's becoming the kind of person who can take an idea and turn it into a full application start to finish. Deployed with real users and proof that you can do it again. That is the skill that pays. That is the skill that AI doesn't replace. That is the skill that gets you hired. Lesson number one, suffering is the cost. No matter what, you will suffer. Even me, I'm going to shoot this video today. Meet three different mentees one-on-one -on -one, and then Minnie is going to make me do like three meetings until I have to go pick up my son. That's basically one third of my day. No matter what situation you're in, you will suffer. Unemployed people suffer. Underpaid people suffer. People stuck in jobs they hate suffer. People who are learning to code suffer. People who are applying to jobs suffer. People who are already employed as developers suffer too. Because the work is hard and the market keeps moving. Suffering is a fixed cost of life. So pick a goal worth suffering for. Your tech journey will be painful when you're confused. It will be painful when you're plateauing. It will be painful when you're improving, but nobody notices yet. It will be painful when you're applying and hearing nothing back. It will be painful when you get interviews and bomb them. The biggest advantage you can create as a job seeker is not intelligence. It's picking a destination that's meaningful enough that you don't quit during the hard parts. Because the how is fixed, it's going to suck. The flavor of sucking just changes. Sometimes it's uncertain. You don't know what to learn next. You don't know if you should do React or Java or Python. You don't know if you're wasting time. You don't know if AI is going to kill the industry. And you still have to act. You still have to commit. You still have to put chips on the table without guaranteed payoff. In that process, making bets with uncertain outcomes is painful. It goes against your instincts because your instincts are built for safety, not for building rare skills. Your brain wants certainty. It wants comfort. It wants dopamine. And the tech job market doesn't care what your brain wants. The market rewards people who can keep moving with imperfect information. The other pain is people. You will be criticized either way. If you do nothing, people will call you lazy. If you do something, people will call you cringe. If you're 30 and switching careers, people will say you're crazy. If you're 22 and unemployed, people will say your degree was pointless. So do something worth being criticized for. When you start coding, you will look stupid. You will write ugly code. You will ask dumb questions. You will get rejected. You will feel embarrassed. That's not a sign that you shouldn't do it. That's the entry fee. Life is hard, but what you get for your life is what you pick. Most people trade their suffering for Netflix. They trade it for scrolling. They trade it for comfort. They trade it for the weekend disappearing. And then it feels even worse because they paid the same life cost and got nothing meaningful back. You can't control that suffering exists, but you can control what you buy with it. Lesson number two. Master the pain trio. 
There is a reason why I was able to successfully transition my career into a software engineer despite my age and despite me absolutely wasting my entire 20s. And you too can beat 99% of people in the tech job market if you can master three things. The shame of rejection, the boredom of repetition, and three, the pain of feedback. You can become a candidate a company is looking for if you are willing to fail repeatedly in public. Look stupid in front of people you respect and keep going long after it stops being fun. Most people can reach a basic level of competence in programming faster than they think, but they never get there because they confuse consumption for progress. If you watch videos and your behavior doesn't change, you entertain yourself. You didn't educate yourself. Learning only shows up when your behavior changes in the same conditions, meaning you don't learn React by watching React. You learn React by building, breaking, debugging, deploying, and getting punched in the face by reality until you adapt. A lot of people right now are stuck in a loop where they're preparing forever. They're reading threads, they're watching tutorials, they're comparing roadmaps. They're asking for the perfect stack. And then six months later, they have the same GitHub they had six months ago. Same portfolio, same confidence, same bank balance, same anxiety. And at the moment you realize that what you do next matters more than what you did last, you become dangerous. Because even if you wasted time, the next rep can change the entire trajectory. That's not motivational. That's just math. Lesson number three, volume, delusion, and the real work. Most people are not failing because they're incapable. They're failing because they underestimate the volume required. Everyone wants the outcome. Nobody wants the reps. Everybody wants, I became a developer. Nobody wants, I was confused for 400 hours. Everybody wants, I got hired. Nobody wants, I applied 300 times, got ignored, got rejected, rebuilt my portfolio and did it again. The other day, I was on a call with a bright young man in my community named Tyler. We discussed how he was able to land a job with AI startup company right out of college so quickly. I forgot the exact numbers, but what was so remarkable was the sheer volume it took for him to be successful. He had upwards of 400 plus job applications and rejection after rejection until he unlocked the lessons, the confidence and the skills necessary to impress a recruiter. He did that for about half a year or so, creating daily habits that eventually became a repeatable system that he could continue improving on. In every domain, there is a certain amount of volume required to unlock a skill. Some people learn faster, some slower, but everyone learns eventually if they do enough reps. So if you choose the belief that you will learn eventually, no matter your background, no matter your age, no matter your past, then your only job is to do so much volume that it becomes unreasonable for you to fail. If you can't get interviews, I'm not going to ask, how bad do you want it? I'm going to ask, how many real applications did you send? Not clicks not easy applies, real applications with a tailored resume, a portfolio link that's actually impressive, and a message that shows you're a human. If you can't get callbacks, I'm going to ask, how strong is your proof? How many finished apps do you have? How many are deployed? How many have real features like auth, payments, file uploads, real databases, tests, error handling? because the market doesn't hire potential. It hires proof. And the more you create proof, the luckier you get. People will say you're a natural when you finally break in. That's cute. They didn't watch the 200 days you coded when nobody cared. They didn't watch the bugs. They didn't watch the frustration. They didn't watch you rebuild the same project three times until it was clean. That's why I tell people, Extrapolate your past success. If you've ever worked hard at anything, sports, games, school, a job, raising a family, you already have proof that you can do reps. 
You just haven't transferred it yet. Humans win because we can transfer skills. If you did it once, you can do it again. Lesson number four, work while you can. If you're in your 20s and you don't have heavy responsibilities yet, you have a window that is unfair. Use it. Not because you should hustle, because you will never have fewer responsibilities than you have right now. A few years of focused effort compounds for decades. If you're in your 30s and you do have responsibilities, your path is still valid. It's just going to require different trade-offs. You don't have the same raw energy and time, but you have something younger people don't have. Urgency. You have context. You have pain. And pain is fuel. If you stop romanticizing comfort, every position on the board has advantages. If you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to lose. That's not a joke. That's power. Because fear comes from having something to lose. And to be fearless, you have to accept that nothing here was guaranteed to you anyways. In real life, your chips refill every morning. With time, and time is the only currency you can't earn back. So if you have capped downside and uncapped upside, that's opportunity. That's the career switch. That's the portfolio grind. That's the applications. That's the interviews. That's building the skill that changes everything. Lesson number five, tech truth and staying power. One of the reasons programming is such a brutal but powerful path is because it forces truth. Your code either works or it doesn't. Your app either runs or it crashes. Users either stay or they leave. Hiring managers either interview you or they don't. There is no hiding. Friends and family will protect your feelings. The market will not. If your portfolio is weak, the market will tell you. If your projects are shallow, the market will tell you. If your interview skills are bad, the market will tell you. And that's good because the truth is the fastest teacher. Most people think the hard part is starting. It's not. The hard part is continuing after the excitement wears off. When the grind feels repetitive, when progress feels slow, when you work without reward, your potential as a programmer is determined by how much uncertainty you can tolerate and how long you can tolerate it. Because the most dangerous candidate is the one who keeps showing up when the reward is not guaranteed. That's why I always, always, always tell my mentees to find work for free. Find opportunities that will help you skill up and put a line in your resume under work experience rather than chasing after the money. Eventually, those experiences will compound and you will be able to land something big. That's how I was able to get my first breakthrough as a programmer as well. Lesson number six, long-term thinking options and trades. A lot of people say they want to break into tech. What they really want is certainty. They want a guarantee that if they do X for Y months, they'll get Z salary. I get it. Bills are real. Rent is real. But if you are stuck, it's usually because you feel like you have no options. Most of the time, the reason you have no options is because you're unwilling to make a trade. I can't study after work. Trade. Less entertainment. I can't apply because I'm not ready. Trade. Ego for reps. I can't build because I'm scared it'll be bad. The trade. Perfection for progress. When you feel trapped, ask, what trade am I unwilling to make? Because the moment you become willing to tolerate what you previously avoided, options open. And fear shrinks when you get specific, not vague. Specific. What happens if I fail the interview? You don't die. You get feedback. You improve. You try again. That's not tragedy. That's the game. Lesson number seven. Focus, compounding, and staying in the game. People underestimate how much effort it takes to stick with one thing. In tech, the price of trying to be good at everything is being good at nothing. And the shiny object list is endless. Web dev, mobile, AI, blockchain, cybersecurity, data science, game dev. You can spend years exploring and never become employable. 
The compounding comes from death. The compounding comes from finishing. The compounding comes from being the person who can build a full application end to end. Because that skill transfers. If you can ship one real app with one stack, you can ship again. And once you can ship again, you become employable. Sometimes you have to be the first person to believe in you. And the reward for that belief is disproportionate. Not because life is fair, because the market pays for rare skills. And rare skills come from uncommon trades. Most people question everything except the beliefs that are running their life. I'm too old. I'm not smart enough. I already missed my chance. Those aren't facts. Those are beliefs you stopped questioning. If you want to win in the tech job market, you don't need motivation. You need reality. Reality is it's competitive. Reality is it takes volume. Reality is you need proof. Reality is you need to ship. Reality is you need to apply more than you think. Reality is you need feedback and you need it to take it. And if you do that long enough, you become the person you used to watch on YouTube and think must be nice. It wasn't nice. It was earned. And if you want to do it, you can, but you have to pick a goal worth suffering for because the suffering is coming either way. So you might as well buy a life you actually want with it. So for those of you still watching right now, I want you to comment below the following things. One, write your current situation in one sentence. Two, write down your six month goal in the next sentence. Three, comment what you think your first step will be to achieve that goal. I'll read all the comments and will respond back to you to give you feedback so you achieve that goal. And if you want to break into tech together with me, step by step with my team, I put together a community you can join to start on this goal right this minute. So click on the description below to join and get started today. Before I let you go, I want you to know that I also had a day one. I even had a past that some might say would have disqualified me from even starting my path as a programmer. So put down your fears and pick a goal worth suffering for today. Let's not waste any more time. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.